Hi folks, it's good to be with you and love to everybody out there. Don't forget to look at uh, my Facebook, my Twitter and my website which is jasonburnspreacher.com It's good to be with you and love to everybody out there and uh, thank you for coming to uh, listen to this video. This video is entitled uh, Hamza and uh, v uh, Bob the Builder uh, the debate analysis um, there's a number of reasons why I'm doing this video and the reason ultimately why I'm doing this video is to honor the Lord that truth uh, may prosper so that's why I'm doing ultimately this video so uh, I'm gonna read the scripture and then say a prayer and then we'll go on to all the things that we need to talk about. So if you turn to John uh, chapter 10, uh, it says, Verily, verily, verse 1, I say unto you, He that entered not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and he leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him. For they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spoke Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spoke unto them. Then said Jesus unto them, Again, verily, verily I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd give his life for the sheep. But he that is a hireling, and not the shepherd whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is a hireling, and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and am known of mine. And the father know me, and even so know I the father. And I lay down my life for the sheep, and other sheep I have that are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice. There shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore doth my father love me, because I lay down my life, that I may take it again. No man take it from me, but I lay it down of myself, and I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment I have of my father. I'll just say a prayer. Father, we just say this. Uh, prayer Lord not to condemn people but Father to 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 draw close to you so I ask Father that this this prayer and this video will bring people closer to you and I ask Lord that you be in every word in everything that I say and that Father this video would be an edification and an encouragement to people in Jesus name Amen Amen. Amen. It's good to be with you. Uh, I want to talk about uh, Hyde Park Speaker's Corner and um, the kind of debate, if you can call it a debate, or by Hamza, uh, a Muslim apologist, and uh, Bob the Builder. It's not his real name, um, Christian uh, debater. So that's what I'd like to talk about and a number of issues around it and I hope this video is a genuine edification a genuine help a genuine blessing to all sides concerned and, and and that's my intention it comes with a good heart it comes with a pure heart it comes with a sincere heart and I hope everybody takes this to heart from that position I have a glass of water so forgive me
Um, I'll start off about what happened. Um, during the afternoon at Tide Park last Sunday, um, I'd set up my banner, Royal Blood Ministries banner, and uh, it was quite a hot day. And I noticed Hamza uh, to my right with a few of his, his friends and camera people. And I just kept my eye on him and then uh, I thought maybe during the day Hamza uh, might want to debate. I was quite shocked actually to see him there. I didn't think he'd have the courage to, to be at the park when I was at the park because I challenged him to a debate. And, and, and I'm being honest with you, uh, Hamza. So I'll talk to Hamza, I'll talk to Bob face to face and others as well. So I didn't think you, Hamza, would be there, to be honest. And I was quite sh shocked that you be, you was there. So I thought, he's got some courage. Great. Because I challenged Hamza to a debate. Um, I noticed later on that Bob the Builder was there at the back of him. And I thought, hmm, it looks interesting. Looks like a debate's getting on. So I thought I'd go over and give Bob a bit of support. Now when I got there, Bob was asking him a question. And Hamza, you seem frozen. You seem totally frozen. And you had your doctor friend there, but you seemed incapable of answering the question. And when I got there and you saw me, to be honest, I think you just froze. I think you, you just thought, hey, what, what's going on here? It's like Bob and Jason together. And, and I think, to be honest, you froze. And I think you froze because you're so used to getting young Christians on their own. And to be honest, it's like bullying. You're like, you really bully these Christians because you know you've been doing your research, you know these Christian, young Christians haven't. So you, you like to get them in a corner. All the Dawa teams like to do this. You like to get young Christians in a corner and batter them silly. You're not used to being challenged robustly by a Christian apologist. And when you are, you don't really listen. You, you're not really engaging. Uh, so I turned up and I saw in your face, Hamza, basically you're in a state of shock. You got Bob at the back of you, and you got me at the side of you, and you really, honestly, if you were honest with yourself, you froze. So then you said, let's go over here. So we followed you, and we got to a quiet place uh, in the shade. And there was lots of Muslim camera people. There was there was quite a few camera people. There was at least four or more Muslim cameras on this situation. There was lots of people around. There's quite a few Christians around. There's quite a lot of Muslims around as well. And Bob was uh, stood at the side of you, and I was told by Mus some Muslims pointed me to go at the side of Bob the Builder. So I went to stand at the side of Bob the Builder, hoping that I could be a, a help to him and a support to him. At this point, things started getting out of hand. Bob was shouting, um, answered a question, answered a question. You were shouting back. And it wasn't really a debate, it was just a shouting match. The issue in hand was concerning, is Muhammad mentioned in the Bible? It was a something, a proposition that you'd not, for as far as we're aware, that you've made. But Bob was trying to deal with it as a, a Muslim community, Dawah teams, in Hyde Park. You said that, Muhammad was not mentioned in the Old Testament or in, in in the Bible and then Bob went to show that in the Quran it says that 
from the Quran perspective is mentioned in the Bible. So, but in the midst of all this, there was it was like Bob shouting, and then you shouting, and I'm going to get onto that in a minute. In the midst of that, you kind of rounded on me, and you said I was, you said that I said you were a liar, and that you were a hypocrite, which is true. Which I'm going to get onto that. But I, I, it came to the point where, to be honest, it, I thought it was just too much. Uh, I, I looked at your face, and and I, and I'll be straight with you, I, Hamza. I, I was, I felt sorry for you, to be honest. Because you bullied so many young Christians and you were getting a bit of your own medicine and you couldn't take it. And you look you looked I to be honest, I couldn't watch any more of it because I, I just I couldn't take part in any more of it because I just felt that you couldn't take it. I thought Bob had done his job. I thought it needs to calm down now. I had to go and look after my own equipment because I got bags near my thing of me. So after a few mi after about five minutes of this shouting match, I decided to leave. At which I hear I, I look back about ten minutes later and I see the police, and it it, it had even gone uh, even worse. I was seen. I was shown a um, a video. Um, snippet of a Sikh that had filmed the last bit of it where you push Bob and then there was a pushing match etc so I just want to come back at a few things I have called you on camera uh, a liar and a hypocrite when I mean a lie, I don't mean you go around lying in your business, day-to-day -day business. I mean it in, in terms of an apologist when you're defending your faith. You're not telling people the truth. I don't know if you purposely mean to, but you put out information that's not accurate. You put out information about Eusebius quoting the last ending of Mark that he only quotes it a few times. I've checked that out. He, ch he quotes it a lot more times than you've said on camera. So that's one area where you've lied. Another area where you've lied is you've you've gone around in the past talking about the Bible's got it wrong about mentioning fair uh, mentioning um, uh, in the time of Moses uh, Pharaoh as Pharaoh when it should be king. That's what you've said. But if you go to the Bible, the Bible intermittently in the time of Moses mentions Pharaoh as king and king as Pharaoh. And also modern scholarship uh, in the talking about the time of Moses says the word uh, Pharaoh was used at that time, uh, not uh, as uh, as a out and out uh, leader, but in terms of uh, how can I say uh, it was a term that was used of. Uh, of leaders of that time, the heads of state, the total heads of state. But it didn't have the same uh, kudos as king when king was being used. But So you're not 100% accurate in what you're saying. In fact, you're not even 50% accurate in what you're saying or what you've said. I've seen you debate uh, a young Christian on the, on the resurrection and you've denied the death and resurrection of Christ, so that is a lie. So those are three, three, three lies that you've been involved in as an apologist, okay? So that's what I mean that you're a liar, okay? It's not that you go around your business signing uh, documents as lies. I'm saying it as an apologist and the things that you uh, saying about the Bible are total lies. And hypocrisy, I, I do believe you're a hypocrite in the sense that you're more than willing to debate these young Christians and you're more than willing to take them apart, but you will not engage in debating the more serious studied apologist. You, you, you don't want to engage in that. And you don't engage 
in that in a, in any in, in, in any serious way. I've seen you debate Hatum and and Lizzie, and you're not you you just were not engaging with them. You're not you weren't even listening to their arguments because you weren't equipped to deal with their arguments. You weren't equipped to deal with their what they had to say about the Quran and the textual variants of the Quran. You even said, "Where's Mansur?" So that's that that's all. So that's the personal stuff about me, because you called me on the cameras, you saying that I was a liar, and I'm just coming back to you and saying, that's what I meant, that you're a liar. So, you know, let's stick to the uh, scholarship and the arguments and not get personal, okay? When I say liar, I'm, I'm, to, I'm talking about academically, you're not saying the right things accurately about the Bible okay that's what I mean by liar I don't mean that you are personally a person who goes around lying to people because I don't know that that's not for me to judge but I can judge academically on the things that you say I go and check it and you're not correct on what you're saying okay so that's those are the uh, few things there Couple of, the other thing as well, you was quite aggressive with me, you're quite angry with me. I can understand that maybe you were, because you misunderstood. You, you, you're you taking it personally when I'm saying you're a liar. Rather than thinking, no, he's on about, I'm saying certain things about the Bible, and he's calling me out on that. Okay. But you were quite aggressive with me, you were quite angry with me. But I, I forgive you for that, and... I don't hold any malice towards you concerning that because you maybe misunderstood the situation. The other thing as well, I think that the situation got out of hand because it, it's a tendency with the Dawah teams. It's the tendency with Mansoor, with Paul Williams, with Young Hamza and with yourself and many of the Dawah teams that when you're challenged you don't want to engage sometimes and I think the Christian apologies find it frustrating because you're willing to chase young Christians you're willing to badger young Christians as Dawa teams so when Christian apologies challenge you they expect you to be fair and honest and to engage in dialogue but very often if it doesn't suit you as Dawa teams you're just ignore the Christian apologist. So the only way the Christian apologist can get your attention is to shout and say, answer the question. So it's because of a tendency of the Dawah teams to, to not be honest that these situations are being created because of the lack of honesty and, the, and, and to be honest, the hypocrisy. Um, Very often you know that the Christian apologist has answers, has studied, but you're just not willing to face up to the challenge. So you ignore the Christian apologist. And, and the first Christian apologist gets frustrated and says, answer the question, but you won't answer it. Uh, we can see that with Hashim when I, I chased Hashim around. I had some information about the textual variants of the Quran. He wouldn't answer it. So he walked off. So I was frustrated. I said, answer the question. He wouldn't answer it. And it was frustrating. But yet all day long he'll, he'll get young Christians and he'll slaughter them. But when he's challenged, he won't deal with it. And I, I want to just talk about this just for a minute. Because this is what was behind the whole scenario and thing that happened with Bob the Builder and you. On that day, I had a nice chat with Hamza, young Hamza. Now, young Hamza does a lot of reading. He's quite a bit of a young scholar in his own way. He does quite a bit of reading. And he'd lost his temper with Bob the Builder the week before. And... Uh, I was on camera 
and and Hamza, young Hamza walked past me a couple of times, completely ignored me. I was on camera. Now, he could have come over to me and said, Jay, do you want to discuss, do you want to debate? I would have said, yeah, but he didn't. Because he knew I, he, he, he would be on camera and he knew he would be challenged on a lot of things that he says. And I remember last year, he said a lot about Bart Ehrman and the nature of the gospel writings. So recently for Hamza, I've been reading a lot on the Dead Sea Scrolls. I just read this book recently, this was for the young Hamza. Uh, ready to discuss with him about some of the things that he said last year. And I'd read this book, I'd done some research on Dead Sea Scrolls, and particularly in the nature of writing, the nature of writing scrolls, how they were written, what kind of communities were it at the time of Jesus, how they wrote, how they passed on documents, etc. So I prepared myself, I've been preparing myself to meet young Hamza, to talk to him about many of the things that he said about the Bible. And this is one of the books that I've read recently, the last month or so, to deal with him on this issue. Now when he saw the camera, he walked past twice, and then later on, he came up to me, put his arm around me, and we had a nice discussion. And then he started to get into a discussion with two Christians, and he must, he must have been being filmed or something because he suddenly switched off from me, cut me out of the conversation, and starts giving his diatribe about the doctrines, how they've developed in church, early church history. And I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute, one minute he's friendly with me, now he's just cut me off because he's going on to his diatribe. I've got a degree in this stuff, I've studied at MA, two, two MAs, I've studied at that level. This is my subject. He does. He won't let me come in to critique what he's saying. So I, I got frustrated. I could have started shouting at him and said, listen, but I didn't. I thought, well, I'm young Hamza, that's the way you want to be. He didn't know that I'd been reading this stuff to have a chat with him about what the things that he was saying, the things that he was talking about, it was meat and drink to me about the early history of the church. But I thought, if you're cutting me out of the conversation, you're being aggressive, I don't want to know. So I just walked away, which was a shame because he was really nice before. And it was the same with Paul Williams. Paul Williams came, and Paul Williams was stood next to me with a couple of Christians, and we are having a, a really nice chat. And then suddenly, he, mu he must have been on camera, he was on camera, and he had his recorder and he got these two young Christians talking and he was talking to them about how the early church and the Jewish, uh, the Jewish people at the time believed in other gods as well as the one true God, these minor gods. Now I've done a lot of research on Paul Williams' views concerning this and I mentioned him to him, I mentioned to him I said to him, I said, you get, where are you getting all this stuff from, Paul? I said, if I remember rightly, you're getting this from Dr. Kirk. And he was on camera, and I didn't know I was on camera at the time. But he cut me out of the conversation, and he said, Kirk, what are you talking about? You mean doc, Dr. Spock? And I've got my notes here, my old notes, which I did on Paul Williams. And the book that he, that he got a lot of these ideas from is called The Man Attested by God, The Human Jesus of the Synoptics by J.R. Kirk, Grand Rapids, 2016. And... All these uh, other gods that in the Jewish literature and, and uh, that he says show that you know the Trinity is not true, that it's just a development of all these other extra gods that were in Jewish literature, um, can easily be dealt with by saying this. When Paul's talking about these things, um, the monotheism, the Jews believed in one God. So when they're talking about 
angels or they're talking about uh, outside the Bible uh, as God or they're talking about uh, or the Roman Empire talking about God the question is to Paul is it are they talking about God ontologically or functionally the Jewish God in the Old Testament is ontological and the Trinity is an ontological Trinity it's not a functional Trinity okay it's not a it's not a it's not one God with three functions uh, connected that's my phone sorry it's one God in three persons it's an ontological so that's how one of the ways to deal with with Paul the other one is to ask questions about the nature of the literature the date of the literature and to, to, to also mention that Dr. J.R. Kirk is is actually um, is actually French scholar with an agenda uh, he is a gay scholar who wants to attack evangelicalism and he'll do any means he can to attack evangelicalism then a book that answers that and is a much more uh, scholarly work and a much better work is J. Uh, Sim J. Garthaskol, The Pre-Existence Son by Erdman Publishers is a book that answers that. So, so I mentioned Dr. Kirk to uh, Paul Williams. He laughed at me. He insulted me. He laughed at me and he said, Kirk, you mean Dr. Spurk, and denied, denied that he'd ever read this scholar. And I have his notes here. I've read his book, or most of the book. And on camera, I didn't know we were on camera, but on camera he denied that he'd read this book. And he wouldn't engage with me. Now I could have started shouting and saying, no, no, answer the question, John, uh, Paul, answer the question. But... I, I just thought I, I it was I, I, I was so shocked at the dishonesty of Paul, the aggression of Paul, and the arrogance of Paul that he, he wouldn't even let me engage with him when one minute we're friends and we're talking and then he cuts me off. And and, and this is what I this is what I found with young Hamza, with Paul Williams on that day. And I think that's what was happening with you and Bob. Is that Bob was asking a question. And rather honestly engaging with him. You was arrogant. And you, you were shocked that you were being challenged. But you was arrogant. That you wouldn't engage with him. And so it became a shouting match. And it could have been a shouting match with me and Paul Williams. I could have said, answer the question. You have been re you have read and been influenced by Dr. Kirk. Answer the question, yes or no. And I have the notes here to prove it. I studied him uh, months ago on what he was saying and, and chased up the books that Paul Williams had been reading. I could have shouted him. I could have shouted at Hamza and said, young Hamza and said, you're on about the early church. This is my subject. Let me come in. But he wouldn't let me come in. So I thought, I'm not going to shout. I'm not going to demean the situation by shouting. If you don't want to engage, I'm not going to engage. But I think Bob um, has seen, and I've seen you, bully so many Christians that it was your time. To, to get challenged and Bob had a right to, to shout at you and say answer the question because you've done it to so many other Christians how many times have you said Hamza answer the question and demanded the Christian answer the question so you were getting a bit of your own medicine and in the end it, it got too far it got to a point where it was a shouting match between you and him it was an interesting and good point that was being made and it, and it exposed the hypocrisy of the Dawa teams that Bob exposed, the, uh, the hypocrisy of the Dawa teams. Um, so, 
because you you do go around uh, the Dawah teams do go around and they have said that the Old Testament and the New Testament teach about Jesus uh, teach about Muhammad so it was a legitimate question to go into and to discuss so that's a lot of the drama and stuff uh, and the pushing and the shoving it, it was really because it then got to a point where emotions were really really high and you you felt a bit threatened and in the end you just couldn't cope and you just said go away and that's how that's what happened and it's and it's this lack it's this